Hi there and welcome to Pimp Your Science. Let's talk now about the unused potential of teamwork in life sciences. If you consider that life scientists in 21st century are posing questions of increasing complexity, no wonder that teamwork and collaborations are getting more on their importance and are burning issue in how to organize science today. Despite, life science research groups rarely work as teams. And if you are now a university professor, you probably are saying, what? Yes, and I'll try to explain why is this so and how can we improve it. So follow me. So this is a picture of a typical group in the life sciences. You have a group leader that is usually a professor. You have also senior researcher, postdocs, PhDs, undergrads, techs. And also if the group is bigger, you can have secretary or even a lab manager. These people are all very well trained and very well organized. However, they actually may not work as a team. And let's see why. Let's think about a soccer game in which red team is facing a well-organized blue group. As you can see here, all players in the blue group are well-organized. They know their position and they know their tasks. However, something is different. If you think about research groups, you will notice first that nobody, that everybody is playing attack. Everybody wants to score a goal. If you do a PhD or a postdoc, you want to be a first author on a nature paper. And nobody wants to play a goalie. So there is nobody to defend the, defend the goal. Likewise, they may, can be also people that actually do not understand the roles the, from various reasons. Whatever, it's a player less. Also, interestingly, as the scientific group is well known, well established on a better university, the coach is actually farther from the group because the coach has other things to do. So, no wonder if the red team plays versus blue group, which is well organized, the blue group is going to lose and lose big time. One more important that you have to understand is that in a red team, everybody have a common goal and share responsibility, and that is to win over blue group. While in a blue group, people have individual goals or aims, mainly to score a goal, but they don't have individual responsibility if the group lost the game. To understand why it is so difficult to build a, a life science team, you should just look at some historical and administrative issues. For example, scientific heroes are almost always, if not exclusively always, individuals. From Einstein, Darwin to Higgs and so on. It's, there is nothing wrong in celebrating geniality of these people. But we are not promoting teamwork and group work by celebrating individuals. In the same way, rewards are also given to individuals. Starting from Nobel Prize to small rewards, they're always with a name and not with a, na with a group. And that may be interesting because, for example, for discovery of Higgs particle, uh, there is a whole team of scientists working on it. So. How should we reward them for their teamwork? In addition, mobility is very well valued in academic career advancement. So you may do your undergrad, PhD and postdoc at different universities and yet get a professorship at four different universities. Hence, it's also problematic to establish a team that moves all the time and the people are changing every five to six years. In addition, climbing the academic ladder, career ladder, is also highly competitive and error, leading to only 2% of all PhD students st starting their PhD finishing as tenure professors. And all that under, there can be only one environment. And that, in translation, means it's better for me to score a goal even if my team loses. Even more, human resource management, or management in general, is not a part of life science curriculum. Scientists are trained in their disciplines like biology or chemistry. However, managing teams or issues that are connected with managing teams are not covered or completely overlooked in their uh, uh, curriculum. That will lead, or that actually leads, to a simple thing. 
and that is that group leaders are just acquiring a leadership style that worked well for their bosses with the idea if it worked well with my boss with some minor modification it will work good for me overlooking that the leadership style of their boss is a close approximation or a copy of a leadership style of their boss's boss which is in turn again from the same reason a copy of leadership style of their own boss which probably worked very well 100 years ago However, successful and well-recognized life scientist of the 21st century is not only expert in his discipline, but he or she also knows how to work in a team and how to develop and lead a team. And this is simple because teams outperform groups. And in 21st century, we are faced with complex questions and less resources. So the ones that knows how to use resources will just win the game. In other words, with any given input, if the group is able to build you a chateau somewhere in the Alps, the team with the same input will build you a castle. And in case you like chateaus, then your team can save you money and quite a bit in building it. Moreover, in age of hyper-competition, low grant acceptance rates, job insecurity and so on, teamwork can sustain motivation for employees and can cope with any kind of job-related stress. This will eventually provide you and your team with a competitive advantage because unlike acquiring a new technology or a new technique, Nobody, no group can copy the employer's commitment and enthusiasm. The best thing, however, I left for the end. And this is, if your team is properly developed, the need for supervision will dramatically drop. The team will be autonomous and self-directed, and you as a group leader will start getting some free time. Aha, now I got your attention, haven't I? Finally, adopting a teamwork culture will definitely boost your career and will open a hidden doors to extraordinary discoveries. I guarantee. I personally don't think that the question of team potential being higher than a group potential is a question anymore. I think the real question is, are you ready to dive?